Do you want to talk first? You want to share something? Okay, listen. Uh, Wednesday night when I went to church, I decided to get saved. Okay. So Wednesday night you gave your heart to the Lord? Well, praise the Lord. Okay, that's very exciting. Yeah. And via, that's awesome. It's the best decision you can ever make, ever. And I want to I wanna spend some time talking with you about that, okay? Kind of right, not right now, but, you know, I want us to get some time together. So so I appreciate you sharing that. That's exciting. Okay. Very, very exciting. Um, and feel free to come to me if you have questions about what's going on, okay? All right. Wonderful. All right. Here we go. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And then Jesus underlined it by saying, but from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. Amen. Okay. So, awesome. Very clear. But the fruit of the Spirit, oops, spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. It says things, there is no law. Amen. Amen. Today's verse, let us therefore come Confidently, courageously, both. Huh? It, if you already know it, it's nice to kind of give them a little bit of time so they can figure it out. Yeah, yeah. Is it boldly? It is boldly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let us therefore come boldly unto the, and this represents where God is. And what he on it? Throne of uh, good's a good guess. <laughs> Grace, very good, throne of grace, that we may obtain. What did the judge give you if you like something perfect? Uh, yeah. yeah, and you can go ahead and give them a little more time to see if they happen to know it before we give them a clue. That's all right. I appreciate your clues, but yeah, those are good clues. That we may obtain mercy and find grace, grace to help in time of need. Very good. All right. Let's think about that for just a minute. Um, this is in Hebrews. Writer, we don't know who the writer of Hebrews was. Oh, was somebody knocking on the door? Or I thought somebody was patting on something in here. I don't think so. All right. Um, we don't know who the writer of Hebrews was. Some people think it was Paul. I don't, but I won't get into reasons right now why I don't. But I think it might have been Apollos, but we don't really know who it was. But, but anyway, stay with me, please. Uh, he says we can boldly come to the throne of grace. That means the presence of God, the throne of grace. That's where God is. He's the source of grace. Now, how on earth can we come boldly in the presence of God? Well, it's not because I'm good. You know, in chapel, we heard that today. Uh, it's not because I'm good. It's not because I've said, Lord, I've been really, really good. I think I deserve to come in your presence. No, 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 no. None of us are good enough to come into his presence. We're all, we're all born in sin. Jesus forgives us our sin, but we don't deserve anything. It's all his grace and his mercy. It's all what Jesus did for us on the cross. So I come boldly because God said you can come boldly because Jesus died to pay for your sins. Their sins are cleansed. Your sins are gone because of what Jesus did on the cross. So yes, Lord, I have sinned. Yes, I've messed up. But I'm thanking you that Jesus has forgiven my sin because he died to pay for my sin. I don't deserve it. But I received it with gratitude. Thank you so much. Well, the phone I gave you is not in these. I need it back. So I can find who it's in. It's Trace. Trace. Anyway, the uh, uh, God wants to give us mercy and grace, and he does because of Jesus. Parker, you with me back there? You with me? Okay. Uh, because of Jesus. He's the only reason we can come boldly. We couldn't come boldly without Jesus. In the Old Testament, God underlined this by most of the time in the Old Testament. There were some exceptions, but most of the time he had a tabernacle or a temple and he had a most holy place. And he said, there's only one of you that can go in there one time a year. And that's the high priest after he's been appropriately cleansed. And he takes the blood of a, of a sacrificial animal, sprinkles it on the mercy seat. And that means I've covered your sins for one more year. But, God was stressing then, I am holy. You can't approach me. You can't come into my throne. And then when Jesus came and died on the cross to make it possible for us to approach God and be in his presence, when he died there, he, one of his last words was, it is finished. 
He said, it's finished. That means I've done what I came to do. I finished my work. I, I've died for the sins of men and, I, and it's finished. And when he died on the cross, God tore the veil of the temple into the most holy place in two. And it was a demonstration that now people can come into the presence of God. In fact, we not only can come into his presence, we can come boldly into his presence, confidently in his presence because of Jesus. And he gives us mercy and he gives us grace. And it's interesting, he shares those two things, two sides of the same coin, kind of. Grace is God giving us what we don't deserve. Grace is God giving us what we don't deserve, like eternal life with him, being his child, being a new person in Christ Jesus. My sins are all forgiven. I have his peace. I have his joy. I have a purpose in life. I have an awesome father. All that's part of his grace. Mercy is him not giving us what we do deserve. Grace is what him, is him giving us what we don't deserve. Mercy is him not giving us what we do deserve. What do I deserve? Well, because of my sin, I deserve death and hell and destruction. God says, I'm not going to do that to you because of Jesus. I'm giving you my mercy because of Jesus. So it's an awesome verse, and it's a good verse to pray, especially when you feel like maybe God's not listening. Lord, you told me I could come boldly into your throne, so thank you for hearing me because of Jesus. All right, let's memorize it. Let us therefore come boldly. Let us therefore come boldly. Let us therefore come boldly, confidently. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, 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 that we may obtain mercy, that we may obtain mercy, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need and find grace to help in time of need and find grace to help in time of need. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and grace. You may remember the next word, and it's like you're looking for something. And find, find grace to help in time of need. Okay. All right. Uh, anything else we need to pray about today, Abia? Uh, pray for my, uh, okay. And we will pray for you and your new life in Christ. Absolutely. Uh, I pray for my family, those family, the stalking family, and I pray for Paul Tavara that everybody will be made. Okay. Good. Questions? You have your hand up? No. Did you want to pray? make a prayer? Uh, baby, uh, baby, go tick tick in the farm. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Baby, go tick tick in the farm. Oh, tick tick is that the name of the goat? Tick tick. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. This looks like a type of deer. Oh. Tick tick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. We'll pray for the baby goat. Okay. Very good. Anything else? Uh, uh, pray for my aunt uh, for a baby. Okay. Because she's scared. Yeah. Do you, know, you told me when she was due, I think, but I don't remember. Do you know when she's due? Or maybe you didn't. Maybe it was somebody else. You don't remember? Okay. Sorry. Okay. Anything else? Anybody want to pray besides me? You want to pray? Okay. All right. Anybody else? All right. Let's pray for a minute. Father, thank you so much. For this wonderful, wonderful verse that you put in your word. Thank you that because of what Jesus did on the cross, we can come boldly into your presence. Lord, we know we don't deserve that. We know it's all your grace. But we thank you, Lord, that by your grace, through the death of Jesus on the cross, paying for our sins, we can have this access to you. We can come boldly, confidently, knowing that you're hearing us and you love us and you care and you've forgiven us. And, and, you're, and you're interested in our lives and you know what we need, even when we don't. So we thank you that we can come confidently and that you're a wonderful father. And Lord, forgive us for the times when we get irritated that we get you because you don't do what we want you to do. And we know that's silly because you know better than we do what we need. You're wise. We're not. But we thank you that we can depend on you. We can trust you even when we don't understand you because we know what you're doing. You're doing in love even when you let us go through the difficult times. So help us to always be confident in your presence, knowing that we're here because of Jesus. And Lord, thank you for the grace you pour out on us. And thank you for the mercy you pour out on us. 
Thank you for not giving us what we do deserve and for giving us what we don't deserve, Lord. You're awesome. We thank you so much. So it's good to be in your presence because of Jesus. Lord, I pray for Via. I thank you for her new faith that she's committed her life to Jesus and trusting you. And I pray, Lord, that you would help her to grow strong in Jesus and, and realize this is the beginning of a life of growth, spiritual growth, and that she will begin to learn how to study your word better and how to uh, worship you and how to pray and just bless her as she grows in Christ. Lord, I pray you'd give her godly friends who will encourage her and bless her and, and uh, just, just take care of her, please. Pray for her, uh, her family that's going on the cruise. I pray that would be safe and good and fun and bring them back safely. I pray for her aunt and, the, and this little baby growing in her womb that you take care of them and take away the fear. Help her to realize you have engineered and designed her body to give birth and that you'll give her grace to do that. So I pray that everything would go really, really well and she would have your peace that passes understanding to take care of this little one growing in the womb. Uh, Lord, I uh, pray for uh, Preston's little goat, Tick Tick. Pray you keep that goat healthy and well. Watch over the goat, all the goats, please. Um, let's see. Did somebody else mention something? Oh, the prom. Lord, I do pray that things would go well at the prom. And I do pray you'd help kids make good decisions. Lord, you know that many times, had many proms that go on across this country, kids make really bad decisions. They either, sometimes they dress immodestly, sometimes they behave immodestly, and sometimes they behave poorly and make bad decisions. And, and Lord, I pray that, that our kids at the prom would make good decisions and and decisions that would bring you glory and not just satisfy the flesh and all that junk. So make it good and special and holy. And uh, is there anything else before Thomas prays? Thomas, go ahead and pray, buddy. Father, I want to thank you for the same. I want to thank you for everything you've done for us. Mm -hmm. Father, I just pray that you would just help my family and those family you know are going to just bless us and let us give glory to you. I pray for the Stalker family. Pray for Luda. And move that they would just uh, be a happy uh, mother and daughter relationship, and that they would just grow and um, they would um, nourish and flourish. Father, just bless the socket fold for once more, and then bless uh, Josh Socket's uh, company called Industrial Services. Inc. Father, for the help them uh, and help us all be a light in a dark world for you. Let's be city on a hill to those who do not know you. And again, I just want to underline what Carl said about Carl, and everybody make. Make clean, make choices. I know feelings can run gray, and I know sometimes it will put our attention to do things that we shouldn't do. Father, I pray that we would just make sh sure that we do the right decisions, even when we do want to do something that's bad. I pray that everybody would dress well, and Miss Blissett will not have to kick anybody out. Mm. Wonderful day, we pray, and thank you for everything you've done. Thank you for Mr. All's patience. Thank you for all that you've done. Let us be alive in our world, Mr. All. Father, thank you for Thomas's prayer, and thank you for hearing all of our prayers, even the ones we don't say out loud. And Lord, I pray you'd help all these kids learn how to pray, uh, learn how to pray out loud even, and maybe in front of others, so that when the opportunity provides itself, they can talk to you and lead others in prayer as well. Uh, Lord, as we look at your word now, we thank you so much that in this class, we spent a lot of time in your word this year, and we pray that as we continue to do that, you would teach us from the lives of men and women in your word as we continue to look at the life of Peter in particular. Uh, please speak to us and teach us and help us to learn as we study your word. Help us to realize this is not just an academic class. This is a spiritual class where we ask you to speak to us as we read your word every time. So be in charge. Get glory, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Is this yours, Preston? I'm going to scoot it over a little bit. Well, you probably moved it when you let Carly in all ago. That's all right. Uh, um, okay. Um, and when they heard it, do uh, you know what you know what it is? You remember that? Let me back up a little bit. Do you remember? You remember what they said? They didn't want it to spread among the people. Do you remember what had happened? Anybody remember this? Do I need to back up a little bit more? Uh, the Holy Spirit came upon them. They got tongues of fire. And all of a sudden started speaking in different languages. And the sound that rushed the wind, they went out and started teaching in different languages. Everybody thought they were drunk. 
but they were because the Holy Spirit came upon them and they were speaking in different languages and preaching and they said, uh, what shall we do to be saved? And Peter said, repent and be baptized in the name of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Uh, that's a wonderful summary of the day of, 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 of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit coming. This is a little bit after that, though. There was something else that happened after that. You oh. remember Peter and John? You remember what happened there? Okay, okay, so they went to the city, and there was a guy there begging for all that people uh, carry daily. Yeah. And he asked for them to give spare up to the poor, and Peter said, look at us, and he got excited, but all he said was, in the name of Jesus, rise up the walk, and reached out his hand, and the guy took his hand, and he started walking and jumping, and everybody was amazed. Yes, amen. And then, what did the what did the spiritual leaders had to say about that? Pharisees and Sadducees. About uh, Jesus that much. Yeah, they yeah, that. yeah. They said they, they, this was spreading. You know that one of the reasons they killed Jesus, they thought, was because they thought he's getting too many followers. People are getting too excited about Jesus, and it's threatening us. We're the spiritual leaders, not him. And so they said, we got to have him put to death. There are too many people following him. Oh, yeah. And then they said, uh, well, too bad. We want to listen to Jesus. So. That's right. So now Jesus is raising up Peter and John. Jesus is ascended to heaven. And God, and he's using his apostles to do the same thing he was doing, uh, preaching and healing. And now they're saying, oh, no, it's ha still happening. These spiritual leaders are saying, oh, no. So we don't want people to follow these guys. we got to tell them to shut up. And that's when Peter and John said, well, whether it's right in the sight of God to listen to you rather than God, you judge. We can't speak of what we've seen and heard. This is a really awesome passage. And we as Christians and followers of Jesus need to have this attitude. When people try to shut us up, we need to say, wait a minute. I'm just telling you what's in the Bible. I'm just telling you what God says. So you judge whether you need to try to shut up God or not. <laughs> but, but anyway, they didn't shut up. So they threatened them and they let them go. They thought, if we punish them, the people are going to get really upset with us. So we'll just tell them, don't do this anymore. So when they were released, they went to their friends and reported what the chief priests and elders had said to them, which, which means they threatened them to stop. And look what they did. When they heard it, they lifted their voices together to God. That means they're praying. They're just, as a group, they're saying, okay, Lord. They said, sovereign Lord who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything in them, they start with praise. Isn't that a good way to start every prayer? Father, you are God. You are great. You're great in every way. You're powerful. You're loving. You're wise. You know what you're doing. You're, you're compassionate. You're in charge. And we praise you for this. And they said, Lord, you're the one that made the heavens. You're the made the earth. You made the sea. You made everything in it. We're praising you. And then you, through the mouth of our father David, your servant, said by the Holy Spirit. Now look at that. Look at that. They're recognizing that when David wrote the Psalms, he was, he was inspired by the Holy Spirit. It was the Holy Spirit speaking through David. That's why we know this is God's word. The Holy Spirit spoke through these men. So he said, through the mouth of David, the Holy Spirit said, and then he quotes scripture. Why did the Gentiles rage at the people's plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his anointed. And he said, that's what's happening right now. They're setting themselves against us. For truly in this city, they were gathered together against your holy servant, Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, along with the Gentiles and the people of Israel. Everybody was against him to do whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take place. God had already decided from eternity past. This is the way it's going to be. He predestined it. Pilate weakly tried to let him go. Pilate's wife had had a dream about Jesus, and she said, he's an innocent man. Don't have anything to do with him. And, and Pilate wanted to let him go, but he wasn't courageous enough to stand up against the people. So he finally said, okay, you know, and he, and he, he, he did, he was, he was, he did. He, yeah, he washed his hands, but that didn't mean he repented. He just tried to say, I want this to be on you, not me. But it really was on him too. I mean, he couldn't escape he, because otherwise he would have said, I'm not going to do it. This man's innocent. He, I, think, I think he's the son of God. I'm not going to have him put to death. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He tried to make a deal with him. He said, hey, uh, it's your custom for me to release one of the criminals. Surely you want me to release Jesus. He's obviously innocent. And they said, no, release Barabbas, who was a murderer and thief. And they, 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 they just, and so he finally said, okay, okay, okay. He gave in. So that's what we have to be careful about. We don't want to give in. Remind me, Thomas, Thomas Henry, uh, I want to give you a 
card. I, I mean, I know we got plenty of time for schools out, but I don't want to forget this, and I forget everything. But so you can go through the Warriors of Christ stuff on your own if you want to. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about that because you won't be here to go through it, right? You'll be somewhere in another school. So at some point, I'd like for you to go through that on your own. Uh, anyway, they said, God, you're the one that plan planned this. You, you set this up. And and now, Lord, and I'm still praying. Now, Lord, look upon their threats. Look, look at the threatening us. They told us to shut up or they're going to hurt us or put us in jail or kill us or whatever. And look what they asked for. They don't say they don't even say, Lord, protect us. Now, there's nothing wrong with saying, Lord, protect us. You still OK, Parker? Have I lost you. It's OK to say, Lord, protect us. There's nothing wrong with praying for protection. There's nothing wrong with saying, Lord, give us wisdom to, to do the right thing. That's good. That's a good thing. That's a good prayer. But they're praying for something interesting here. They've been threatened. They know what they did to Jesus. They know they've been threatened. They could be hurt. They could be killed. They could be put in prison. And they ask this, grant to your servants to continue to speak your word with all boldness. Give us courage. Sorry, let's start you have a quick second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could you, 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 can you stay here for a minute? Let me grab something real quick. Okay, Miss Tina's going to teach you all about Peter. <laughs> no, I gotta do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll be right back. Thank you, Tina. I tell you what you could do, you could tell her what we've been talking about. She'd probably like to hear it. Okay. <clears throat> Absolutely. I'm really proud of Preston. He's really, I wouldn't have to share it a lot. Yeah, yeah, he's, he, he's serious. He's good. He's yeah. got a lot of good thoughts. And, and also, for those who did not raise their hand, it really is okay to doubt. We all suffer. But it's not okay to doubt. Yeah. 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 Yeah
I'm sorry. He's talking about John the Baptist. John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure um, somewhere in the Bible it says he looked at wine and pouring out into a glass and said, "That's my uh, with me." I'm going to be so I'm, not sure, I'm not sure about that one. Um, I talk about with Jesus said, "This is my blood." Jay can't remember it to me. Question: Talk about that when Jesus said, "This is my blood." Jay can't remember it to me. That's it. Yeah, it represents the blood of Jesus. That's the point. He said, blood is shed on the cross. It's body and his blood. Yeah, we have right into our church. We do too. Yeah. Some churches do use wine. I think it's better to use grape juice. You know why? You remember the bread they ate? You yeah. Know, it was Passover. Do you remember what kind of bread it was? Unleavened. Unleavened. Do you know what leaven represents? Oh, rising. Yeah, yeah, but but what's it represent? Why do, they had to get rid of all the they had the feast of unleavened bread in the Old Testament too. They had to get rid of it all. You with me? They had to get rid of it all, and it represented getting rid of sin. Leaven is a type of sin. It it sometimes represents pride specifically, but it represents sin in general. Leaven, and 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 that and it's used more than once in the Bible to represent sin. Paul warns if you let a little sin in the church. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. He said it's, it's, kind of, it's a representative type of sin. So when Jesus uh, told us to take the Lord's Supper, he said, this is my body. This bread is my body. So, And it was probably almost certainly unleavened bread because he was eating the Passover with them. They ate unleavened bread at Passover. So he was eating unleavened bread. He said, it represents my body, which means my body is sinless. I didn't, I'm not sinned, so this represents my body. It's, it's blood and leavened bread. And I think the same thing about grape juice. When grape juice is fermented with yeast, it, it can turn into wine, but but grape juice unfermented would be like bread unleavened. You know, I think that represented the pureness of Jesus' blood. So that's why we drink grape juice. Now, I know some churches serve real wine, not, not Baptist churches, but some churches serve real wine. And I'm not being critical of them, even though I don't think that's the best picture of myself. That's just when Jesus calls it the fruit of the vine, I think he's talking about grape juice. Mm -hmm. Oh, awesome. Awesome. That's good. That's good sir. So, uh, anyway, uh, so the, the, the ministry goes on, and, uh, and God is keeping these people close to him. And we're going to read an example or two next of how God had to deal with sin very severely in that early church. But we'll stop here today, unless you've got something else on your heart and mind. Anything else? Yes, sir. I'm ready for patience. With this Martha, because then, like, one girl that might have trouble, I don't know if she's going to be loaded off, but uh, we're not going to go that. And then, then one girl that couldn't, because she got to a different community. Like, I just pray that this Martha just is, gets it all figured out. Okay. We don't know. Okay. Uh, Miss Martha? Miss Martha. Okay. Okay. Y'all ready to pray? Go? Okay. Well, Father, I thank you for these kids. I thank you for Miss Tina coming in and talking with them. And, uh, Thank you that uh, they had a chance to have some good conversation with her. Lord, thank you again for reminding us of how your early Christians, the early followers of Jesus, uh, with Peter and John, prayed for courage and prayed for boldness. And you gave it to them, even though their lives were being threatened. And eventually, Peter was killed, crucified upside down, because he loved Jesus, because he wouldn't quit talking about Jesus. And we know, Lord, even before that, Stephen was stoned to death, because he wouldn't stop talking about Jesus. And James was killed with a sword because he wouldn't quit talking about Jesus. And so, Lord, thank you for the fact that they were courageous enough to give their lives rather than shut up. And they knew that, that after this life is over, they're going to have an eternity with you. So, Lord, help us to have the same courage and to be found faithful. Uh, it's unlikely that anybody's going to kill us because we love Jesus. But, Lord, we want to be found faithful no matter what, even if people say bad things about us, even if they criticize us, even if they roll their eyes at us, even if they don't like to hear about you. Help us to be courageous and loving and wise, and uh, but, but help us not to lose that boldness. So thank you for this time. Uh, Lord, I pray again for the prom, that that would go well. You be in charge of that, please. Give the Melissa and others the grace and strength they need, and wisdom to handle things wisely, and help the students all just to seek to glorify you first of all. 
And Lord, I pray for Ms. Martha. You know what she's having to deal with, and students, and I pray that you'd give them wisdom as well and give her wisdom, cause everything to work together for good. Lord, you know that even in a Christian school, sometimes we have kids who decide to make really, really bad decisions. We've had it through the years, and uh, it hurts us, and we're sorry for it, but we pray that you would somehow help us to be wise and do the right thing, and again, help us to, uh, to not get caught up in that stuff ourselves. Help us keep our focus on you. Thank you that we're heading towards a weekend. We pray that this weekend we will honor you and glorify you and magnify you, that we'll worship you well. We pray that you'd uh, help us to be teachable as others teach your word and preach your word. Help us to listen and learn and grow. And Lord, as we have fellowship with other brothers and sisters in Christ, help us to be a blessing to them and uh, help us to appreciate them and maybe learn from them, learn how to pray for them. So Lord, just be in charge of us this weekend. Help us to bring you glory. If you want to bring people into our lives that we can talk to about you, we'd be glad to do that too. So help us to be aware of those opportunities. Bless these kids. Keep them safe. Help them make good decisions. Bring us safely back on Tuesday, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.